Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to show you how to change out the brake pads on your Lamborghini Gallardo. This will work for any 2004 to 2014 Lamborghini Gallardo. I have a Gallardo Superleggera, but um, with carbon ceramic brakes, which is a little bit different than the steel brakes that you find on most Gallardos. So um, I'll be sure to highlight the differences in that, but the overall procedure and fundamentals of changing your brake pads remains the same. Um, and then I'm going to show you what I had with my brake pads that was a problem that I thankfully caught before it got too bad. And it's something that you should check on your car as well. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you what I have on the bench and then we can go into the car and um, get wrenching on it. So All right, so here we are on the bench. Um, these are the brake pads that I actually took out of my front calipers on my Super Legera. And one thing I wanted you to notice was the the thickness of the wear material is thicker on one side than it is on the other. And I did a little bit of research on this and uh, a lot of people on the R8 forums are having this issue as well um, since it's the same platform. And um, they speculate that it might be due to caliper flex um, under hard braking and I have a tendency to agree with them. Um, I'm really happy that I caught this because if it went any further, see at this edge it's like almost worn to the, uh, the metal backer, but if it went any further, it'd be digging into my carbon ceramic brake, which would be a very expensive fix. So I'm very happy I caught this. And um, this car does have OEM wear pad, brake pad sensors, um, but they weren't tripping the brake pad sensors. So, you know, no indication to the normal user, but um, you wouldn't know this unless you inspect the brake pads yourself. So something to keep in mind on your car if you have carbon ceramic brakes, you're going to have a, uh, a single brake pad or two brake pads per caliper like this one is. But if you have um, steel brakes, you're going to have four brake pads because um, on the carbon ceramics, you're going to have a six piston monoblock caliper. And then on the, uh, the steel brakes, you're going to have a eight piston monoblock. Um, but overall fundamentals are the same. Um, instead of having one pin, and I'll get, I'll get into this on the car, but instead of having one pin that drives through this little hole right here and holds these pads in, you're gonna have two pins. And then the pads just come right out, just like these will. So let's dig into the car and I'll um, jack up the car, take the wheel off, do all that fun stuff, and uh, we can change out these brake pads. Okay, for this job, you're gonna need a torque wrench, a 16 millimeter socket for the wheels, this is a padded socket. You can use a non-padded socket. Um, I recommend this one, um, and I'll link it in the description below. Uh, 13 millimeter socket, uh, socket wrench, a breaker bar, a flathead screwdriver, an 11 millimeter socket, a brake bleeder. This is semi-optional. We can talk about it more um, when we get to that segment. Um, but either way, if you have one of these cars, I recommend you pick this up too. And then you're going to need the brake pads. Um, I'll link the brake pads that you need for both the steel brakes and the carbon ceramics in the description below, which ones I use. Um, and then I'll make recommendations for the steel brakes as well, because you have a couple options with the steel brakes. Okay, so one last thing before we jump into it. Uh, you might ask, do I need just new brake pads or do I need rotors as well? Um, and one thing to do with this, you can actually do this on the car if you're careful, is to get yourself a good set of uh, hand calipers. I got these from Harbor Freight for 20 bucks. They work great. And um, you're gonna wanna measure the thickness of your rotor. Um, I already did this on this car. Um, the minimum thickness for these carbon ceramics is uh, 37.5 millimeters. Um, a lot of people say you have to weigh it. Um, that's a little bit more involved, but um, it's the same thing for steel brakes. Uh, I'll be sure to include those minimum thickness specifications for your car, um, for like the base steel brake Gyarados. Um, and you can go in here and get a rough estimate, right? You're always gonna have a more precise measurement on the bench, but you can go in here if your hand calipers and just measure um, the thickness, you know, and, and just make sure that um, you don't have to buy new rotors at the same time. Um, and be sure to, uh, also get past, geez, I can't get these out. There's a little lip that forms where the, uh, the brake pad doesn't contact with the rotor. 
And that might give you a little bit of an accurate reading if you don't measure past that little lip. And if you feel this on your steel brakes, it might be more, more prevalent. But um, you're gonna wanna get the calipers past that, and you can see that there's little indentations on the caliper themselves that will allow you to measure past that little indentation and measure the true thickness of this, um, this rotor. So um, I measured this, I measured all my rotors and they're all at 38 millimeters. So I'm good to go on that aspect at least. Um, so be sure to do that. And if you need those um, rotors for steel brakes are a lot less expensive than carbon ceramics. But um, I'm gonna take the wheel off and I'll show you how to do that as well. And we'll jack up the car and we'll take out these uh, brake pads. All right, so before you jack up the car, you're gonna wanna uh, take your 19 millimeter socket that has the protection on it and uh, just loosen up the wheel lug nuts on the, on the ground. I've noticed this is a lot easier than jacking up the car and trying to do it up in the air because, well, it doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna unbolt and the wheel might rotate if you get the other side loosened as well. And then you, you'll, put, you'll put unnecessary wear onto the, the front differential as well at the same time. So let's make sure they're like maybe half a turn loose and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the car. So you're gonna get your low profile jacks, uh, pump jack and jack up the car. Um, I'm gonna put a, a diagram in the top right to show you exactly where you need to um, place this jack to, uh, to lift the car up. And then I'll also link a, uh, a pump jack that I recommend that's low profile enough to fit underneath this car. Um, but basically, all you're really looking for is there's, if you look at inside the wheel well of your car, it, it's like transverse, and then it will angle in just a little bit. And you'll see that in the diagram. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the, uh, the circular section of the, your, uh, your jack right in that area, just like the diagram shows. And that should be a strong enough point to, uh, to jack up the car. Um, there's not really any like, like pinch welds or anything since this is a unibody monocoque, but, uh, once I get that in spot, I'll go ahead and jack up this car and, uh, I'll show you what to do after that. Another thing is a lot of people say that you shouldn't jack up one side of the, uh, the Gallardo. I kind of think that's a little bit, um, BS. Um, I think that came from like the Diablo where individuals were jacking up one side of their car and then the windshield was uh, cracking. I mean, it's, I don't know. I think it's carried over from a lot of that. Um, I've done this multiple times now and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. I mean, my argument is, I mean, you jack it up and nothing happens or you go over like a, a rut in the ground and then like the chassis is you know only supported by three wheels and you know your windshield doesn't crack or like even you go over like a speed bump at an angle and like even at some point there's gonna be like two wheels that are on the ground so like I, I don't know I think it's kind of BS but I like to hear what you guys think in the comments um, if this is true or not I think that I think the chassis has enough uh, torsional rigidity to handle any sort of loads like this so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have an opinion on this, I'd like to hear it. Another thing that I do that might get a lot of comments is instead of using a jack stand, I use uh, like little blocks of wood. This really isn't ideal. I mean, I haven't found a jack stand that can support this. I really think at least in the front, in the, in the rear I have these awesome jack stands that like fit like perfect back onto the back frame rail. You can see that in one of my earlier videos actually. But I do this just for added safety because um, I know that this pump loses hydraulic pressure over time and it really isn't ideal. All right, you can, you can roast me in the comments, I, I would appreciate it. If you have a better solution to this other than like jacking up both sides at the same time and having to buy another one of these jacks, I would love to hear it because I, I guess I can't just find a, a solution that is low profile enough. You know, like this is what like two hands high and the car, the wheels already jacked up off, already off the ground. So if you have a solution to this where I can, I can support it without the, the bottle, the pump jack, I'd love to hear it.
but this is my solution for now. It's safe, and uh, you know, even someone in the in a different video recommended this, and I, I was like, that's kind of ghetto, but it works. So let me know what you think. I'd like to hear that. All right, now that the car's uh, jacked up, I'm gonna take the topmost wheel bolt out. And now that we loosen it on the ground, it's a lot easier. So I take this one out, and then I have one of these little guide pins that kind of just screws into the, uh, the hub. And I actually found this in a junkyard from an old Audi. Um, <laughs> that doesn't really help you, does it? But I'll link one of these. You can get metal versions. This is like the plastic version. Um, but I'll link a metal version. And what that's going to do is it's going to guide the wheel from coming off. And then it's going to prevent any um, damage on this caliper. Um, the paint, that is. So um, I'm going to loosen all these bolts, and then we'll take the wheel right off. Just like that. Alright, so now that we got the wheel off, we're going to work on getting the uh, brake pads out. There's a brake pad here and a brake pad right here. Uh, I think this is a little bit damaged from some rock chips or something like that. Um, so you have a 13 millimeter bolt on the back of the caliper that you're going to want to loosen up. Inside there's a bracket right here. We're going to want to undo this connector. This is for the ABS, or the, uh, as you were, the uh, brake pad wear sensor. And then underneath that, there is a, another 13 millimeter bolt that holds this whole entire bracket on. Uh, I have issues with taking the uh, wear sensors out because this, it just doesn't want to come off this bracket. So I just take the whole bracket out. It's just so much easier. So I'm going to take that, those two bolts out and then uh, we can go from there. Okay, so the this pin right here is is holding the uh, brake pads in. So once you loosen this bolt, this 13 millimeter bolt I was telling you about, you're, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a screwdriver and place it right in between here and then wedge it in. And what, is, what that's going to do is it's going to move this spring clip down just a little bit so it will go past this lip, right? And what I do is I take this out, this little bolt, Oop, there you go, and I get even an even smaller bolt that will fit past the threads and then it will, it will interface with the, the bottomed out portion of this pin. And then I get a socket wrench that, or a dead blow hammer or something like that. This one has seen better days. Um, <laughs> yeah, I get a padded socket wrench like this one. And then I, I just tap the back of this, uh, this random fastener and with this um, pushed in this pin should slide right out through the front of this caliper right here and then should come out all right the hands in there holding the screwdriver and wedging it come on there it goes now you see it's coming out of the back side just like that and then I'm going to move this out of the way and hammer it. There we go. Just like that. So it's partially the way out. And now you just have to finagle it. It's really kind of, really kind of hard without damaging it. And the trick to this is just kind of manpower it. Like push down on the spring at the same time and pull it with the other side of your hand. And you should be able to get it the hell out of there. There you go. Just like that. See that? And then I'm actually going to reuse this fastener. So I screw this back on and then put that to the side. Okay, so I hope you're sticking with me because we're almost done and um, we can get these brake pads back on. But I wanted to point out the difference between the uh, carbon ceramic brake disc calipers and the steel brake disc calipers. So on the steel brake disc calipers, uh, you're going to have uh, two pins and they're both going to be held in with uh, little spring clips that you're going to pull out and then you're going to pop that pin out of the caliper like I did with this one. But the, the pins are just going to be a lot thinner in diameter. Um, and that's really the major difference. And then you're going to have four pads instead of two, like I said previously. So let's get back into the repair and I'll show you what else you need to do to fix this car. All right, so now that we have that pin off, we're going to uh, 
take the wear pad sensor out. And what I do is I, well, when I have two hands, I kind of wedge this back and forth like this. And then um, this, this uh, pad wear sensor cable will come out of the, uh, the caliper. It's just like this. And it should pop out just like that. And then now you're available to have the pads come out of the car. Um, if they don't want to come out like these ones, I recommend you just slightly with your hands kind of push or pull the cal the uh, the brake pad towards the caliper outer sides just a little bit. Like I am see, pulling it, and now it makes it a little bit looser, right? And then it wants to come out. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side. And what you're doing is you're compressing the uh, pistons just a little bit, just enough to get it out, just like that. And thankfully, these little top little tabs, these are actually for, uh, I'll talk about these in a little bit, but uh, these little tabs at the top are enough to give you a little bit of a fulcrum on the caliper, or the rotor that is, to push those little uh, pistons in. So, just finagle it, and they'll eventually come out. Come on. There we go. Freaking things. There we go. Got them. Okay. Okay. So we got the pads on the bench. Little Audi logo right there. Um, you're gonna take want to take the spring clip off. And you have two options with these wear sensors. These sensors right here, right? See that right there? You see that right there? So. They're little sensors that are built into the pads with a little bit of resistance on in um, built into them. So when they wear past a certain point, um, you don't get continuity in this wire anymore, and then the car detects that you have a worn brake pad. Um, I <laughs> on the other side, I tried to re reuse these, and they uh, they broke. So you have one of two options: you can get a pad wear uh, sensor delete kit, which is just basically like a blank plug with a uh, like a little resistor in it and that will like trip the ECU to th or the computer to think that like you still have the power sensors in them um, and other cars I've honestly just deleted it from the ECU programming but I don't know how to do that in the Gyrodo yet um, so I'll link new power sensors and I'll also link the uh, the resistor delete if I can find it for the Gyrodo um, in the description below but I'm, I, I tried to pull these out and reuse them, but they're not coming out. What I'm going to do in this case is I don't have the new pad wear sensors, is, uh, and they just clip in. They just snap right into the new, cal the new pads. But I'm just going to pull these out and then plug this bracket in and then zip tie it until I get the pad wear sensors, and then I can just clip it in real nice and easy. So let's look at the new pads. These came in a nice box. I've never, I've never seen such nice equipment for just a set of brake pads, but... I guess you get what you pay for, right? Um, these are exactly the same as the Audi pads. They're made by Paget. You can even see on the on the Audi pads that it actually says Paget on the outside. You can see that right there. So same pad, same manufacturer. Um, I'll link these in the description below as well. If you get these ones, exactly the same material, same compound, all that fun stuff. Same company, but just no Audi tax. So it saves you about 150 bucks, and I'll link that for the front and the rear of the Super Legera. Um, but you can see where the the pad sensor clips in, and that little indentation. And when you get new pad wear sensors, all you're going to want to do, all you're going to do, is just clip it into that little spot, and then the spring pressure just keep it in there. So that's just the only thing I'm not going to show you in this video, unfortunately, because I don't have them. But uh, first thing, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, compress the uh, the pistons in the caliper because you know as these wear right the pistons come out a little bit further and further and further so we're going to want to push them back into the into the caliper housing so we can actually fit these new pads so we're going to go onto the car and I'll show you exactly what you need to do on that one as well okay so there's two camps of individuals there's ones that say that to push these pistons in, all you have to do is grab them with your hands and push them in, and the hydraulic uh, fluid will travel through the brake line, back up into the reservoir, um, through the master cylinder and all that fun stuff. 
And then there's the camp that says that you should um, bleed the system and uh, and um, just let the hydraulic fluid come out through here as you compress these pistons. So you can see there's six pistons in here. Um, it's called a six piston monoblock caliper. Monoblock meaning that it's a single um, cast aluminum piece. Um, and I've done both, right? But I'm going to show you how to bleed it because I've noticed that when you, all you have to do is press these in with your hands, by the way. I've noticed that it's a little bit easier to, uh, to push these pistons in when you uh, have your, when the hydraulic pressure doesn't have any sort of resistance to it. So I got my brake fluid bleeder right here. This is another Harbor Freight jobber again, right? And then you take off this little cap and then put the uh, brake fluid bleeder line on top. And then you get an 11 mil wrench. And then uh, just turn that maybe half a turn to a quarter of a turn. And that should open up the system to where you can you can press those calipers in or the uh, the pistons in as you were. So I'll show you that right now. All right, so half a turn. Ah, there we go, just like that. All right, and then we're just going to reach in over our hands and push those pistons in, and you should see hydraulic fluid come out like we are right now. Mine's a little bit green; it needs to be uh. It needs to be changed, to be honest with you. You push them all the way to the back, all the way into the body of the, the caliper, and then we can fit our brake pads in. So I'm going to do this side, and they, what happens is like you push at the top one, and then the bottom one comes out a little bit, and then you go to the bottom, and you know, and then you go back and forth, and so on and forth. So uh, this side is good. Right. Now we're just going to seal it back up. Okay. And this brake fluid loves paint. It loves to like eat it and destroy it. So be very, very, very careful. I've destroyed the finish on a caliper once before because of this damn brake fluid. So be extremely careful. Um, clean up after yourself and uh, make sure you get all the residue on the top of this one. So I'm going to go get a, a rag and clean that up before I move ahead. Same with the back side. So you have two bleeder valves, one on this side and then one on that side. So then you get your hand in there. This side's a little bit harder. You know, sometimes if you're a steel brake guy, it's so much easier because you can get a screwdriver in there and push it in. But since these are carbon ceramics, uh, they're very brittle and you can't do that. So if you're having trouble and you have carbon ceramics, you know, feel free to pull this caliper off. There's a, there's a hex, um, I think it's a 10, a size 10, on right here and right here that you can pull this whole caliper off push them in by hand, and then be good to go if you're having troubles with carbon ceramics. But if you have steel, just shove a screwdriver back there, push it in gently, do with all three, and then you should be good to go. So I'm going to do that off camera, try to push this in by hand. I don't want you looking at the back of my head for two minutes, so I'm going to do that off camera. All right, so I got the old pad with the new pads, and I'm going to put the one in the rear first, just like that. Hold it in, it might stay like that. And this one. There we go. I personally reuse this hardware. You can get new hardware if it makes you uncomfortable. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to put thread locker on this fastener and uh, it should be good to go. But installation on this is not that fun. I usually get my co-pilot to help me out, but she is indisposed at the moment. So you're going to press it down. Yeah, come on. I'm sure there's a special tool for this, of course. All right. Yep, getting the wife. Ah, oh, she's busy. I have to do it myself. It's a freaking thing. Okay. Oh, got it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's just a little bit tricky, right? And then see, make sure this pin is aligned, these two flat surfaces, 
make sure they're aligned vertically and they they match the flats on that side. Um, and if you need to move it, just uh, get a pair of pliers and twist it just a little bit. Mine's off by about 30 degrees. All right, just like that. Okay. Then what I do is I get a I get that trusty old socket wrench again that's rubberized, and I hit on this side, and then I push in with my hand on the other side. So I'm kind of fighting the spring pressure, but there we go. There we go, perfect. Aligned in. And then I'm going to go a little bit of blue thread locker and tighten this bad boy up. Alright, so I got the, the bolt tightened back here. I made sure that the bleeder valves were tight. I tightened that bracket in the back and then reconnected the connector for the brake pad wear sensor. And then all we gotta do is put the tire back on and then we're ready to roll. That is if you did the other side already, which I have. And see this, this little pin just helps so much. So I'm gonna get these bolts on and then lower the, lower the car down and then um, we should be good to go. So one last step. Alright, so I lowered the car down after tightening these bolts hand tight and then I'm going to come back with a torque wrench and torque it down to 103 foot-pounds. Um, I'm going to work this in a star pattern. Um, you know, I, I, I mix between metric and SAE units because, I mean, what's better than keeping you on your toes, right? Go. Okay. Just like that. Easy peasy. So overall pretty simple job. Um, one thing you're going to want to check if you did the bleed method or if just in general it's a good idea is check your brake fluid. Um, your brake fluid is located in the, in the front trunk underneath this little panel right here. And you just want to make sure that the, the level is below the, or above the minimum line, but below the maximum line. Um, and I'll be sure to make sure, I'll be sure to uh, make a brake fluid recommendation for you if you need one. Um, just, just in case it's low on your car. Um, another thing to note is since we did push those pistons out, you're going to want to press on the, um, the brake pad or the, uh, the brake pedal a couple times to rebuild that pressure in the lines and then push that uh, those pistons back onto the brake pads and then subsequently onto the rotor so that way when you don't back out of your garage like the pedal goes to the floor and you're like I have no brakes um, it's kind of sketchy I've done that a couple times it's kind of fun but <laughs> well it's fun now that I'm talking about it so just be sure to do that and, and pump it a couple times until it's firm and you should be good to go uh, you're gonna want to bed in these pads so in the description below I'll link a uh, the recommendations from Audi for the R8 for how to bed in these these pads onto um, either new carbon ceramics or existing carbon ceramics and then I'm also going to provide a description for you gentlemen with uh, steel rotors as well and how to bed in these pads with existing um, rotors and new rotors so just to get you down the road um, you're going to want to do that anytime you need to put new pads in um, just to extend the longevity of the pad and the rotor itself because what happens is like you heat it up and then the pores of the either the metal or the ceramic expand just a little bit and you want to get that pad material in there to uh, to coat that rotor so that way you just get less wear. I can dive deep more into the science of that um, I just don't know it off the cuff off the top of my head so um, I hope this video helped you and uh, I'm pretty excited to drive my Super Legera with the uh, new big pads because the other ones I had were a little bit asymmetrically worn but um, until next time, uh, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks.